It's time for Rockboard High School Basketball here on WZOT. And now, all of the action. And we're back at Rockboard High School. Jeff Sharp, Adam Blaylock, Eric Brownlow, as we're going to uh, about to getting ready to start the boys game as the Rockboard Yellow Jackets will be taking on the Chapuga Indians. As Rockboard comes in 6-7. 4-0 and in region play. Chattooka is 8-7, and 5-0 and in region play. And uh, a common opponent that they played here recently as uh, they both played Pepperell as Rockmart defeated Pepperell here 76-47 and Chattooka defeated Pepperell 66-50. Can't get a more even matchup than that. I think this is going to be... Uh... Definitely the biggest test of the season so far uh, in region play, that is. It's going to be a good one. Yeah, I, I believe it is. And looking at uh, Chatuga, it looks like, you know, uh, kind of a mirror image of what I see on, on our end. So as I think it's going to be, uh, you know, up and down the floor. Uh, don't, don't know who all starting for Chatuga yet, but uh, they've got some height. Looks like they've got some athletic ability moving the ball around pretty well. So, yeah, like you said, uh, very, very similar to our team. So we want to thank all of our sponsors for sponsoring Rockmore High School Basketball, Chick-fil-A, Four Seasons Lawn Care, Family Savings Credit Union, All-Star Motors, Harrelson Termite, Silver Comet Furniture, RW Laundry, All-Star Car Wash, Freeman Harris Funeral Home, Chicken Scratch, Rockmore Rent to Own, and I've seen Derek Tilly here in the building tonight. Good to have him here at the game. Lewis Motors, Tummy Taxi Food Delivery, Barnes Tax Service, and John Purser Allstate has uh, come on for, for basketball season. And I want to remind everybody, if you're listening and you own a business, uh, baseball season's right around the corner. Get with Mark Garrett, Mark Lunkin, or call the station to Brian McDowell, and they will get your sponsorship on there as Robert Torline and a cast of characters will be bringing you all the action of Rock Mart High School baseball, and that starts up February 8th. Yeah, Springs Forest knocking on the door, uh, helping with the track program this year, and, and glad to be back out there uh, with, with those guys, Coach Parson and, and Coach Clark. And uh, we're kicking it up uh, the 22nd. So uh, everybody uh, seen soccer out conditioning and uh, gearing up for a big spring. So, but uh, here tonight we've got the basketball team, as uh, like I said, is this matchup of the two top teams in Region 7, AA. Rockmore comes in scoring 58 points a game, allowing 59 points a game. But a lot of that is due to some uh, uh, some of the bigger 5A schools like uh, South Balding and Cass that they allowed 81 and 90 points to. Uh, you know, the, the Cass game was here in the tournament. The South Balding was before they got the football players. So uh, a lot of this, the scoring average that we're allowing is steadily coming down every game. Yeah. Completely different team from South Paulding to Cass for sure, and even from Cass till now. These guys have, have gotten out here and I think meshed really well. Coach Calhoun is doing a great job with uh, with a strategy during the games, and I think uh, I think we may be the team to beat. I want to get ahead of myself, but we're definitely a contender. Well, we'll definitely we're, we're definitely a contender as we finished runner up to Chattooga the past two years. And uh, we'll find out tonight if we're the team to beat or not. Right. Uh, but the, the Jackets are led by Sam DePew, who's averaging 12 points per game. And uh, Juke Boozer is averaging 11 points per game with 10 rebounds per game. Tyler Rollins at 8. Ty Floyd and Glenn Walker at 7 points per game. And Sam DePew comes in leading the team at 88% free throw percentage, uh, followed by Logan Burge at 75%. And we know last night, as the Jackets come away with a 67-48 victory over Cross County rival Cedartown, and, uh, you know, we'll see what kind of, you know, having that game, as you heard Coach Calhoun say, he was uh, able to rest the players late in that game. So, good to see Coach Nick Sykes, the defensive coordinator here uh, tonight. As uh, he's got his young, young uh, daughter in his arms and showing her some of the basketball players. Uh, but I look forward to this game and to see exactly what we have 
uh, in the region as you, we both played model as well. Uh, we beat model by three, but we know that was right after football. The football players got here, and Chatuga uh, beat model by you know a little bit more than than we did. So uh, I I don't remember exactly what that score was. Uh, but, uh, like we said earlier, our team is very, very different than what it was uh, less than a month ago. As today's January 11th, we played that game December 12th, uh, but that model game was December 14th. So, uh, just under a month, this team is very different and is playing very well. Playing very well together. And uh, just looking around the, uh, the gym here tonight, kind of reminds me of last night. Pretty full house. Uh, opponent in red over there, and, and we've got a good crowd here too tonight. So it's going to be a good one. I'm excited for this game. So I am too. We're uh, down to about three minutes to go before the start of the game. We're going to take a two-minute break and try and get our starting lineups and uh, get ready for tip-off as these two top teams in Region 7 get ready to go at it. We'll be right back in two minutes. Your personal information is very important and when compromised can lead to big security issues. Don't trust your information with a here today, gone tomorrow company. Call somebody with reliability and stability in this community. Barnes Tax Service, 770-684-7556. Lewis Motor Company is the oldest car dealership in Rockmart. They have been serving Rockmart and the Polk County area for 56 years, providing quality used cars and great customer service before, during, and after the sale. Lewis Motor Company is proud to offer guaranteed credit approval while you wait. Give them a call today at 770-684-6694 or stop by and see our staff at Lewis Motor Company, 218 South Piedmont Avenue in Rockmart. Make sure you stop by Rockmart Rent to Own, 966 Sears on the Highway in Rockmart. If you are looking for furniture, mattresses, and recliners for every budget, come by and see owner Derek Tilly. Rockmart Rent to Own is your U Haul Truck Rentals dealer. They also fill propane tanks with the cheapest rates in Polk County. They're open Monday through Saturday or call them at 770 684 5314. That's Rockmart Rent to Own, right across from Morningstar Baptist Church in Rockmart. Are you aware that untreated wood is highly susceptible to termite damage? Are you bothered by other pesky insects like bed bugs, ants, roaches, wasps, and hornets? Call Harrelson Termite and Pest Control for an inspection. They have the experience to handle your pest control needs. Call Harrelson Termite and Pest Control today to schedule an appointment. Now, back to the action of Rockmart High School Basketball here on WZOT. And good evening. We're back. Jeff Sharp, Adam Blaylock, Eric Brownlow here with you tonight. About one minute until we get ready for uh, a tip-off. And I believe we've got some uh, starting lineups. Tonight. Yeah, starting lineups for the Chattooga Indians, Trey Flowers, Jamarius Mosteller, Devin Price, Clayton Johnson, and Malachi Jackson. And, uh, Eric, I'll let you give, your, give Rob Marks. All right. So, Rob Mark at number one, Duke Boozer. Number five, Cooper. Number ten, Rowan. Uh, number four, DePew. And 23, Ty Floyd. Uh, you threw me off there. I was, I was about to say, DePew's not starting tonight. He is. I skipped right by him. So. His mom was sitting behind me. I don't know where she went. She yells too much. It's a good thing. <laughs> you know you don't yell any so I, I don't say a word I just call the game as I see it <laughs> so Shane Williams a clock keeper getting ready to announce the starting lineups for tonight's game as the uh, Rockmore Yellow Jackets taking on the Chattooga Indians and a matchup of the two top teams in Region 7 of Double A. And Broadmar keeps climbing. Uh, they keep climbing the standings in Max Preps. As uh, they they were 35 last night, and I think I got a text that that had just been updated today. So I'm gonna try and pull that up, depending on how the Wi-Fi works here. Good luck. No service, but we got we got Wi-Fi. But there's a lot of people in here that's on that Wi-Fi. Absolutely. 
So, yep, that's not going to pull up. So. <laughs> Uh, and just a reminder that tomorrow there's a wrestling tournament here tomorrow as uh, the wrestling area duels will be here 9 o'clock start uh, so coach Drew Lindsay and the wrestling team uh, will be have the uh, the area duel so if they can win that then the next weekend they'll be they'll quali- or if they can qualify then they'll be going to make into the state tournament So for that. And then they've got the individual coming up uh, the first part of February. So looking forward to that. So if you don't have anything going tomorrow, come on down here to the Rock and take in a little wrestling action. Talking to some of the wrestlers today, top two teams move on, and there's nine teams in our area. It's our current region for most sports plus Heard County. So uh, pretty tough competition. Freeman's not in that in the wrestling. They didn't say they were. Hmm. That's, that's a good thing. It is a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> Freeman's pretty good. All right. So Boozer, Depew, Cooper, Roland, and Floyd on the floor for the jacket. Flowers, Mosteller, Price, Johnson, Jackson on the floor. As Price and Boozer going to jump it off. And Boozer wins the toss and he knocks it all the way out. And it's going to be Chatuga's ball. Or, yeah, it's, he he pointed he pointed our way, but I, I thought Boozer knocked it out of bounds. So Chatuga's going to actually win the toss, and so we'll get the next jump ball. So Jackson throws it in. He gets it inside to Johnson. Dishes off to Mostella. Goes down the lane, and that shot is block or not blocked, but missed. And Boozer with the rebound. The pew with a two ball. Right, it's put on the line, and that's so the pew starts with an open shot and knocks it down. Half a step back, and he would have had a three, but he gets a two. And then Jackson takes it down the lane, and Boozer's going to pick up his first personal as he fouls Jackson taking it to the goal. Looks like they're going to try to use their speed and their quickness to, to get to the basket pretty quick. Haven't seen much of an offense yet other than that. Yeah, and pretty much both teams are the uh, the same size. Yep, match up really well. So Jackson's free throw, first one's good. So we're trying to get the possession arrow right down here, as it should be our ball. As Boozer knocked it out, gave it to Chatuga. Uh, so that means they gain possession of the jump ball. It'll be ours on the next jump ball. Uh, Jackson misses the free throw. Price with a rebound. Boozer, he directs that shot, and Floyd comes away with the rebound, and that foul is going to be on Malachi Jackson. Coming out playing very aggressive, which I didn't expect anything left, but they're going to get after it. So Boozer walks the ball up the floor. Looks like a 1-3-1 defense for Chatuga. Cooper, his shot off the side of the backboard, rebounded by Johnson. He gives it up to Jackson. Rob Martin, their... Uh, Man defense, as they always are. They give it up to Jackson. He dribbles, top of the key, goes down the lane, dribbles it off his foot, saves it into Flowers. He gives it up to Mosteller, and he knocks down a three. That's a great shot. He's very proud of himself, too. But that that sure is. <laughs> the loser brings it up. Ty Floyd throws it right into the arm. Uh, Mosteller, they collide. He gets it up to Johnson. That shot, no good. Rebounded by Boozer. He gets it up the floor very quickly. Bounce pass, three-quarter court to Floyd. He gets tied up by Jackson and stolen away. And he's taking it in. Tyler Rowland lets him go right by. Boozer tries to block the shot. And he makes the shot. And Coach Calhoun gets a timeout as Chatuga takes an early 6-2 lead. And that's going to be a 30-second timeout. We'll be right back. Here's a real tweet from a real Chick-fil-A guest. Hoover Zach writes, I kind of want to have a party for no other reason than to get Chick-fil-A catering. We hear you, Zach. And not that you need a reason, but there's always birthdays, anniversaries, holidays, Tuesdays, 
the list goes on. Because it's the little things that bring out the party. Like nuggets, strips, salads, cookies. You get the idea. Tweet your stories at Chick-fil-A with hashtag the little things. Now more of Rockmart High School basketball here on WZOT. Back at Rockmart High School, Jeff Sharp, Adam Blaylock, and Eric Brownlow. As Chatuga has jumped out to an early 6-2 lead, we're in the first quarter. 6-21 to go as they're still talking about possession arrow. Trying to listen in to see what they have to say. So it will be Ron Marsh ball. They finally figure that out. But Boozer knocks the ball out of bounds. And Chatuga got the Chatuga got the ball out of bounds. So they gained possession. So now we will get it the next jump ball. Boozer has the ball. Cross court to Roland. He drives in back to Boozer. Johnson's all over him. He gets it to the pew. Three ball on the way. And it's good. And it's six to five. The pew with all five points for the jacket. Jackson drives on Glenn Walker, and that ball rolls around, and it's good, and Glenn Walker's going to pick up a foul, as he just came in for Ty Floyd. Boys came to play. Eight to five is now the score. Malachi Jackson at the free throw line. That shot is up and rolls around. No good. Walker with a rebound. But Glenn's going to bring it up the floor. Jackson's on him. That's got to be a blocking foul. And it is. Malachi Jackson's going to pick up a foul. So very aggressive defense by Chatuga. They've got yeah. two personals already, both of them on Jackson. He did all the fouls to the point. <laughs> so Jatorian Williams is going to come in for Jackson. So, well, good. Let's get him out of the game. So we did. Yeah. So Walker throws it into Roland. He dribbles to the right. Gets it to the pew. Back to Roland. He gets it over to Boozer. Get past to the pew. Back to Roland on the right wing. He drives down and gets a shot blocked by Mosteller. And then Johnson flies down the floor. Walker rejects that layup. The few picks up the loose ball and very quickly back down the floor. Pulls back. Gives it up to Rowan. Over to Walker. Top of the key. Over to Boozer. And it looks like uh, Chatuga has settled down into a 2-3 defense zone. And the few drives baseline and knocks down a 10-footer. So the few has all of our points. Malachi Jackson has all of their points. It's 8-7. to seven. Mosteller with the ball. Gives it up to Williams. He passes it right side to Flowers, down in the corner to Mosteller. He drives to the free throw line, gives it up to Johnson. Walker goes for a steal. Johnson picks up his dribble, gets it inside. To the prize, he dishes to Johnson, cutting down the lane. This is the shot. The few with a rebound. The few dribbles, free throw line, gets it inside to cutting Chandler Cooper. He, gets it. he got his shot rejected by two. Indians and the ball goes out of bounds. I thought that was pretty good. I don't know. I thought that was a good block. Both of them got it. As Chandler got caught too far under the goal. Yep. So Roland throws it into the view. He gets it to Boozer. They pass off, skip pass all the way over to the right corner to Walker. Three ball on the way, and it's good. And Rock Marsh got their first lead of the game at 10 to 8. So that timeout by Coach Calhoun settled them down, and now they've got a lead deep three by Johnson, and he buries it. And just like that, the food is up 11 to 10. Right, Boozer with the ball, gets it up to Walker, back to Boozer. Got to be careful of those lollipop passes. As Booster throws it about five feet over to Pew's head, and it doesn't matter what kind of vertical you got, he's not catching that one. So Sam was seven feet tall. Three fifteen to go, opening quarter. Chatuga with the ball after the turnover by the Jackets. Rob Mars in a man-to-man defense. Rowan is guarding Flowers. He dribbles left. Gives it up to Williams. Three ball on the way. No good off the back iron. Rebound run down by Cooper. He gives it up to Roland. He brings it across half court. Slows it down. Rodmark gets into their offense. 
to Boozer, top of the key, back to Rowland, left side, eight dribbles, back to Boozer, Depew, fakes a three, back to Boozer, three-pointer on the way, too hard off the back glass. Cooper had the rebound, had it taken away by Price, and now they get it up the floor very quick to Flowers. He tries to hit a cutting Williams through the outer baseline and throws it out of bounds. We have got to protect the ball with their throwaways and takeaways, and literally right out of our hands. We've got to do a little better job there. Loser with the ball, three ball on the way by Depew. No good. Tip up by Walker, no good. Rebound by Price. Johnson with the ball. Rowland cuts him off. Walker comes, picks up his man, forces him to give it up. Gives it to Mosteller. He's dribbling out around Buzz, around half court. Dribbles to the right. Gets it, tries to get it inside, and it hits off Boozer's foot. And uh, Mosteller and Boozer exchange pleasantries there. So a little bumping, as now Mosteller is going to push him. So. So Juju yeah, yeah, was under, and now Marcella just pushed him away again. That's twice. Turn around. Yep, he turned around. The loser got the steal. Now he's got it. Him and Walker. The oof, and uh, Ross was right there to so knock that away. Marcella all the way down gives it up to Johnson. Ross got the few. Price picks up the loose ball. Two ball on the way by myself. Air ball. Oh, my God. And then Johnson goes for the rebound, and the is going to get called for a foul. I don't know what game he was watching. Looked like good defense to me. We didn't even leave his feet. Wow. Uh, and then Devin Price, as Walker tried to alley-oop to Boozer, and Price was right even with Boozer and knocked it away, and then he was extremely happy about that. As they try and get it into Price, and Rowland knocks it away. I think Price was uh, pretty happy with that block as he pounded his chest about 10 times. Yeah, in the meantime, everybody else was flying down the floor. That's right. Johnson throws it in and can't get it in, and he finally does to Williams. So Logan Burge has entered the game. He's on Williams. Walker is on Johnson. Spinner missed. Loser with a rebound. 11 to 10 is our score. Two minutes to go, first quarter. Walker to Boozer, over to Rowland, takes the pass to the Peter, and Tyler Rowland knocks down a three, and that's 13-11, Jackets lead by two. Great fake. So, Chattooga's in a 2-3 defense, and he faked the pass to the Peter in the corner, wide open three, they get it inside the cross, and he gets it. Oh, uh, double technical. No way. So... They, uh, Boozer and Flowers were actually caught. I'm trying to hear to see if they if he gave them a warning or if he gave them an actual technical. I know you already warned it. Oh, really? Well, that's because... I never saw the T, but that doesn't mean much. No. So if so, that's the technical on Boozer and the technical on Flowers that also count as personal foul. So that's going to be Boozer's second personal. And in the meantime, Boozer and Flowers over here joking and laughing. So. <laughs> uh, Flowers just uh, well they. They may have been joking and laughing, but Boozer's going to come out of the game and Foy's going to come in for him. And Johnson's going to come out, and Dylan Woody's going to come in the game for Chattooga. So Walker, Rowland, DePew, Burge, and Floyd on the floor for the tackle. Rowland with the ball. Burge sets the screen. He gets it over to Floyd. He dribbles back out, top of the key. Over to Walker, back to Floyd, over to Rowland. He dribbles back out near half court. Robart trying to set up their offense, gets it to Walker, wide open three, short. Burge goes up against three Chattooga Indians, and Mosteller comes away with a rebound. Happens pretty often. Burge, uh, usually the shortest man on the floor under the goal doing the rebounding. Yeah, but he's got pretty good ups. He does. So. 
Flowers with the ball drives in on the few. The few blocks the shot. Flowers gets the rebound, puts it right back up, and he scores, and it's 15 to 13. 50 seconds to go to the lead. The few three ball on the way. No good. Rebound. And the rebound was Mosteller had it. Rowland took it away from him, and Tyler Rowland's going to get a foul. Yeah, just unfortunate right there the way the ball bounced there. Kind of went high, and Tyler ended up wrapping his arms around him. So that's our fifth team foul. And how many fouls on Tatuga? Three. Three. So five and three on fouls. 35 seconds to go before the end of the first quarter. Tatuga leads 15-13. So just like we always thought it would be a back-and-forth game. Flowers with the ball. Floyd is on him. Down to 20 seconds. Flowers tries to drive. He dishes to Mostel a three ball, and it's good. 18-13, Chattooga with a five-point lead, their biggest lead of the game. Down to 10 seconds. Gets it over to Roland. Back to Depew. Over to Walker. Back to Depew. He dribbles. Gives it up to Roland. One second. He shoots. And at the buzzer, he shoots, and he's going to get fouled. And that foul is going to be on number four, Jamarius Mosteller. And Tyler Rowland is going to... Tyler Rowland is going to go to the line shooting two. It's the end of the quarter. Actually, it's not. They put point three seconds. I thought I heard the horn. You did. <laughs> well, Tyler Rowland is going to go to the line shooting Clay Birch Boutique two shots. So see, go see Tracy Clay in the Triangle Shopping Center. They have Southern Pride, cotton tees, hats for men and women. Go to theclaybirch.com. As Tyler Rowland makes that first shot. Second shot by Tyler Rowland. Is up and it is no good. And Price grabs the rebound, but with point three, there's nothing you can do. So the quarter runs out, and Chatuga, at the end of the first quarter, Chatuga leads 18 14. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm a left-hand turn single. Tink, tink, tink. The guy in front of you has had me on for the last 14 miles. And since you're stuck in traffic, you can just sit back and... Wait, you're going to try to pass on the left? Didn't you see my signal? And if you've got cut rate insurance, things could really take a turn for the worse. So get Allstate. To find out more about Allstate home and auto discounts, visit your local Allstate agent, John Purser, at 770-684-1328. Are you in good hands? If it is new landscaping or a landscape makeover, Four Seasons Landscaping can make it happen. They specialize in irrigation, plant design, and installation, sod, and much more. Call 678-757-1616 for a free estimate. Four Seasons Landscaping, proudly sponsoring Rockmark High Sports. Now, back to the action of Rockmart High School basketball here on WZOT. Back at the Rock as the Chattooga Indians lead the Yellow Jackets 18-14. Chattooga's going to get the ball to start the second quarter. And uh, this game's been is, uh, living up to its billing. Absolutely aggressive on both sides. Flowers drives in on rolling. Nobody there. He bounces it off the... Uh, off the glass and in, 20-14. to 14. Glenn Walker brings the ball up the floor, passes over to Depew, and Chattooga's in a 1-3-1 defense as they extend it all the way out near half court. As Depew drives in, dishes off to Burge over the top, and then Price blocks Burge's shot. Jackson has the ball, goes right down the lane, misses the shot, Walker tips it back, Flowers picks up the loose ball, gives it up to Jackson. Three ball. Off the front iron. Rebound by Flowers. Another shot. He's back to Price. Over to Jackson. Rockmart's in a 2-3 zone now. Give it over to Mosteller. Back to Jackson. Over to Mosteller. He takes a uh, dribble inside the three-point line. Johnson with the rebound. Misses that. Price with the rebound. He misses. And Roland finally gets the ball for the Jackets. Rowland gives it to Burge. Back over to Floyd, left side. Back to Rowland, right side. Burge, three ball are on the way. Off the front iron. Walker went up for the rebound. Him and him and a Price tie up for it. 
And, and they're going to give the ball to Rockmark <laughs> after the ref threw his hands up in the air. So Chandler Cooper's going to come in the game. Ty Floyd's going to go out. Walker rolling. Cooper, Burge, Depew on the floor for the Jackets. Rolling, trying to get it in. All the way out to Burge. Over to Depew, got away with a walk. Walker, three ball, just short. Rolling with a rebound. He goes up, gets a shot blocked by Price. Walker picks up a loose ball, takes it right at Price, and that's going to be an offensive foul on Glenn Walker. And that's a good call by the official. Yeah, got, got excited, got into him a little bit too much. Yeah, it's, uh, and they've been so used to Price going and blocking the shots that Walker probably thought he was going to try the same thing and took it right to the goal, but Price just held his ground. Yeah. And, uh, Eric, I think that's the second foul on Glenn Walker. Uh, I guess it is. Six on us. So six on us. Chatooka's in the bonus. The few just knocked the ball out of bounds, and so Chatooka's going to throw it in. It's still 20-14. to 14. Uh, six oh five to go. Oh, that's a double wow, double. wow. Come on, now. Ref was not even looking at wow. it. Wow. They get it inside the cross. Walker blocks his shot. Johnson picks up a loose ball. Jackson drives down the lane. And takes the pass to Johnson and then lays it in. And it's 22 to 14. Rolling with the ball. Gives it up to Walker. Hooser's coming to the table. He's going to come back in. As he's got two personals. Pass over to Roland as that 1-3-1 one, one defense by the Indians uh, way out above the three-point line, giving us fits right now. Jackson drives in. Horrible miss by Jackson. Rebound by Tyler Roland. 5-20 to go. The Pew gets it, takes it right to the goal, and Johnson knocks it out of bounds. So now Blake Huggins and Chief Poos is going to come in the game. Logan Burge goes out. And Glenn Walker goes out. Jatorian Williams is going to come in. Trey Flowers goes out. So Mosteller. Walker goes. Walker stays in. Tyler Rowland goes out. Boozer. They throw it into Boozer. Back to the few. The few three ball on the way. A little bit too hard. Walker and Boozer go for the rebound. Boozer gets it. Shoot. And then there's going to be a foul on Chatuga, as that's going to be on number 10, Clay Johnson, and Duke Boozer is going to go to the line shooting two. As Boozer shot, got his own rebound, shot again, and Johnson fouled him. Well, there's a fight for every loose ball. I haven't seen a game like this in a long time. Well, first place in the region, depending on this game tonight. Okay. So... Clay Birch Boutique free throws. Juke Boozer knocks down the first one. Go to theclaybirch.com or visit Clay Birch Boutique on Facebook. Second shot by Boozer is good. It's 22 to 16. 505 to play, second quarter. First points of this quarter for us. So Clayton Johnson, three point on the way. That's way short. The few picks up the rebound. Gives it up to Boozer. He gets it to Walker. Walker gets it quickly up the floor. As he goes right off, gives it to Defue. Back to Boozer. Back to Defue. Fakes a three, goes right around Williams, dishes to Boozer. Three ball on the way, and off the front iron, no good. Mosteller with a rebound. That ball's deflected by Defue, stolen at half court by Boozer, dishes to Walker. He goes in for the layup, misses Boozer with a rebound, and he puts it in. A great battle between Boozer and Mosteller, and Boozer comes away with the ball. And it's 22 to 18. Jackson scored four, the last four points. Marcella with the ball, gives it up to Jackson. Deep three by Malachi Jackson, no good. Johnson tips it away from the Pew. Boozer picks up the ball. Four minutes to go before halftime. The Pew with the ball, dishes back to Huggins. He gives the top of the key to Boozer, back to the Pew, wide open three from the corner, and it's good! And the Jackets are within one. It's 22-21 as the Jackets have scored seven straight. And Chattooka's going to get a timeout. That'll be a 60-second timeout. And we'll take it with them as the Jackets on a 7-0 run. It's 22-21. Our kitchen is where our life happens. It's the heart of our home. It wasn't always perfect, but now it is. 
thanks to a home equity line of credit from family. I just love my kitchen. Use the equity in your house to love your home with Family Savings Credit Union. Visit FamilySavingsCU.com. This is Ryan Robinson, branch manager of your local Family Savings Credit Union. Come by and visit us sometime, 101 Felton Drive, Rockmark, Georgia, 770-684-8601. Equal housing opportunity, member NCUA, NMLS number 800746. Are you aware that untreated wood is highly susceptible to termite damage? Are you bothered by other pesky insects like bed bugs, ants, roaches, wasps, and hornets? Call Harrelson Termite and Pest Control for an inspection. They have the experience to handle your pest control needs. Call Harrelson Termite and Pest Control today to schedule an appointment. Now, more of Rockmart High School basketball here on WZOT. <laughs> Back at Rockmart High School, Chattooga's going to have the ball on the side. 3.44 to go before halftime, 22-21. Chattooga with a one-point lead as they had stretched their lead to eight. And Rockmart scored seven as Walker's going to put a little pressure on Jackson. And now they they get a trap in the corner. They give it off, and it's still by the few. Great heads up play right there. That's what it's going to take the rest of the night. So DePew gets it up to Boozer. Cross court to Huggins. Back to DePew. Huggins has it in the right corner. Back to Depew around half court. Over to Boozer. Blake Huggins, wide open three. No good off the back iron. Marcella gets the ball. Boozer tries to take it away from him. He throws it way up court to Flowers. And he throws that one in the back court. Jackson picks it up, and that's going to be a back court violation. And we got away with one there because I think Glenn got a hand on it as he threw it away. Yeah, pretty sure he did, but they got away with one first. Coach Calhoun screaming, stepped on a line down here as uh, as Chattooga's bringing it down the court. But they throw it into Boozer, right back to the few. Over to Walker. Skip past the Boozer inside to Cooper. Back to the few, over to Huggins on the wing. Gets it to Boozer. Walker, he drives right to the goal, takes it up against Price. He blocks it. Walker gets his rebound, shoots again, and then Jackson throws away with it. Flowers drives down the lane and throws it off the head of Huggins out of bounds to the Chattooga. As Blake wasn't, Clayton Johnson was trying to cut to the goal, and Huggins was in front of him, and it bounced right off his head. Jackson throws it in to Mosteller. He gives it up to Flowers, over to Jackson. As he drives down the lane, Blake Huggins knocks it away, and there's a steal. Call again. And that's going to be a technical on... On who? Technical foul on 23, Malachi Jackson. I must have said something because I didn't see anything. Yeah, I, I didn't see anything. So, ah, he, uh, yeah, he, he had some uh, unpleasantries for one of the Rockmar players as he got the ball stolen from him. The few at the line shooting the technical misses the first. Dylan Woody's going to come in, and I'm sure Jackson's going out because that's his third personal. Second shot by the few is up and good, and we have a tie game. So Dylan Woody's going to come in. Malik Al Jackson's going to go to the bench as there's already been three technicals in this game. One on Boozer and uh, then one on uh, Flowers and one on Jackson of Chattooga. So we throw it in. Walker's got the ball. He drives in on Johnson. Takes it. Dishes to the few. Three ball on the way. No good. Rebound by Boozer. Picked up by Woody. And then Walker well, came from out of bounds to take the ball away from Woody. <laughs> and he got caught. Tried a little slick move, but the official, it was right in front of the official. Well, usually that doesn't matter tonight. Right, you're right. <laughs> so, Stuga with the ball. Huggins is trying to trap Flowers. He gives it up to Price, over to Johnson, over to Woody. Then Mosteller, as this defense is really intensified, dealt Woody with a three, and Johnson gets a rebound, and there's a foul inside. And the foul's going to be on... Blake Huggins, as so Chatuga is going to go through the line shooting a one and one, and the the shooter is going to be Devin Price. This can't with a with a game of this intensity. I guess there's going to be uh, lots of fouls. Not too consistent yet, in my opinion, with the rest. But 
Well, that, that was way away from the ball. Price misses the free throw to few with the rebound. Brings it up the floor very quickly. He gives it up, and that's going to be a foul on Monticello. And DePue's going to go to the line shooting one and one. So, Eric, are we in a one and one or are we in one a one? Okay, so how close are we to two shots? Uh, we got we have seven. So, DePue has a violation as he crossed the line before it hit the rim. He knew he missed the free throw, uh, that Clay Burks boutique free throw, as the best foul foot shooter on the team has missed two tonight. At least two, maybe more. So Woody has the ball to trap him, gets it off to Johnson. He dribbles down the lane. Floater is good. The Tuga leads 24-22, one and a half to go before halftime. Boozer with the ball, gets it over to Walker. And then he gets it back to Boozer, top of the key, over to DePue. And that Chatuga defense really extends you way out past the three-point line. Skip past the Huggins. The Pew at the free throw line, back to Huggins, left corner. The Pew wide open three, and it's good. And it's 25-24, and that's the first lead Rockmore's had in quite a while. Great I think, ball movement. I think their first lead since it was 11 to 10, and then Walker's going to get. So Glenn Walker reached in on Flowers, and he got called for the foul. And what Flowers is going to be, and that's Glenn's third personal. Our bench and our fans were not happy with that call. So, Ty Floyd's going to come in. 58 seconds to go. Glenn Walker goes to the bench with three personal. So, Glenn's got three. Boozer's got two with a technical. And, uh, Eric, is anybody else in foul trouble for us? Um, no, everybody else has one or two. All right, and then, uh, so Flowers knocks down the first one. We're tied at 25. What about for Chatuga, foul-wise? Uh, Malachi Jackson has three in a technical. And then Mosteller has two. All right, so uh, Flowers missed the second free throw. Boozer got the rebound. They bring it across half court. 45 seconds to go. The Pew drives down the lane, and that's got to be a There's no way that's a ball. Price, was, Price moved up under him, and the Pew got called for an offensive foul. Wow. That's not the first one of those they've missed tonight. But that was uh, pretty obvious. So, Chatuga with the ball. 25 seconds to go before halftime. We're tied at 25. Chatuga led by eight at one time. It was 22 to 14. We've come back, took a lead, and now we're tied at 25. Chatuga's just holding the ball for one shot. Mostella with it. Boozer has him. Price, he's sticking that knee out. That's a moving screen. Mostella right to the hole. Boozer with the rebound. Two, one, pulls up just past half court. Oh, the front iron. It almost goes in. Wow. So, the top two teams in the region after one half of play is tied at 25. Let's just start it over. <laughs> so, we're going to take two minutes. We're going to get some of the uh, some of the stats going. Coach Tim Puck is going to join us here at halftime as uh, we've got another rec basketball game going to break out here at halftime. So we'll be back in two minutes. Hey, folks, this is your old buddy Bill Sherfsey here at All Star Motors. We're stacking them deep and selling them cheap. We have available financing for every credit need, including our new Buy Here, Pay Here program. You can check us out on the web at www.allstarmotorco.com or call 770-684-CARS. That's 770-684-2277. Or better yet, just come see the friendly folks at All Star Motors and go Jacket. Hungry? Get the food you want from the restaurant you love delivered at taxi speed. Try Tummy Taxi Food and Delivery. We deliver from all the restaurants in Polk County to all of Polk County, as well as Taylorsville, Braswell, Yorkville, and parts of Temple. A delivery charge is only $5 in the city limits of Rock Martin, Oregon. If ordering from these areas, you must have a minimum order of $10 required. Tummy Taxi Food and Delivery is open 10 a.m. to 9 p.m., Tuesdays and Wednesdays, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. 
You can call or text at 678-734-0382, 678-734-0382. Visit them on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash tummy taxi, 678-734-0382. The LeGrand family is back in the furniture business. Silver Comet Furniture is one of the largest furniture showrooms in North Georgia. Recliners starting at $199. Sofa starting at $299. Free delivery within 50 miles. Financing. No money down, no problem. No credit, no problem. 12 months, same as cash for qualified customers. Also free 90-day layaway. That's Silver Comet Furniture, 2000 Cedartown Highway, 678-685-4320. You're listening to Rock Martin High School Basketball here on WZOT, 101.9 FM, AM 1220. Back at Rock Martin High School, and uh, the boys' game is at halftime as it's tied 25-25, the two top teams in the region. And, Eric, give us a quick breakdown of scoring in the first half. Uh, we've got the Pew leading all scorers with 14 points. He has uh, three three-pointers. Uh, well, she's missed three free throws, so that's unusual. For him. Other than that, we got Rowan with four points and Boozer with four points and Walker with three. Uh, their leading score is number 23, Jackson. He had eight. And he had all those. He scored the first eight of the game. Yeah, he was all the fouls in the score, and that was, that was him. <laughs> and Trey Flowers has four. Clayton Johnson has five. And that's, you know, that's about it. Six for uh, Musfeller. Yeah, not not a whole lot of scoring. And a lot, and got three technicals already. Yeah, yeah three te- yeah three technicals. One wow. uh, one on Boozer, and then two on uh, one on Jackson, and one on uh, Flowers of uh, Chituga. So wow, uh, Boozer and Flowers got theirs together. Well, we're joined by Coach Tim Puckett, and uh, Coach, we talked uh, last night how this game tonight, the game tomorrow against Jordan Central, both of those were four and two coming into the region play. Uh, we only had one loss. We come out with a huge 69-44 victory over the Chattooga Lady Indians. And uh, I guess the, the best moment of the night was with just uh, uh, with about 103 to go in the third quarter. Kiara Berry made a layup to give her, uh, actually pushed her over 1,000 points for her career. And she's only a sophomore, 14 games into her sophomore year. You know, that's, that's something, you know, Coming in, I knew she was going to reach that milestone after last year, but I didn't know when. But for her to get there, you know, halfway through her sophomore year, you know, it's, a, it's an incredible mark, you know, and there, there's a reason that she's being sought out like she is right now, you know. Uh, she's, a, you know, every coach's dream to be able to coach a player like that. But the thing is, she makes everybody else so much better, and that's the reason she's able to score because, you know, if you don't guard Megan, for instance, you know, she's going to knock down on threes on you. So when people are doubling down on her or they're um, uh, denying Megan, it just leaves us a, a wide open opportunity for us to score. And you know that's us being able to play on selfish basketball. Yeah, and you're led by two sophomores as Kiara comes in averaging 26 points a game. Megan comes in scoring 11 points a game. And once again tonight, those are your two leading scores as Kiara had 45 on the night, and I think Megan had 13 or something like that. That's right. But, you know, and I tell you what, you know, you think not looking at scoring, I, you know, I, I got to give a huge shout out to my pro players, uh, Emma uh, and Ambria and Desiree. They did a fantastic job controlling rebounds, you know, and pushing the ball for us, you know, and they get second and third opportunities. They did a tremendous job boxing out, securing the rebounds. So, you know, without them, you know, we're not as successful as we are, you know, because so they do a damn up job crash the board and, and protecting the rim. Yeah, and actually Emma Evans leads your team with eight rebounds a game. And uh, her and Desiree Williamson, she's got eight and Desiree's got six. So, uh, you know, Desiree does it, like you said, she does a great job crashing the boards, getting those rebounds. Uh, I, I just, I would like the shot she throws up, I want to see her score. Yeah, and I know you do too. And I, I feel so bad for her because – she dribbles the ball. She handles the ball really well. She gets a lot of uh, rebounds. Uh, but whenever it comes scoring time, it's almost like, you know, yeah. something something crazy happens when it's her shot. Yeah, and, and you, know, just, you know, when you look at yourself, even as a fan perspective, you know, you may see those type of things where, you know, 
a lot of times it looks like she's out of control. But, you know, she does so many things extra that, you know, that are invaluable for the team that, that you just cannot overlook. I mean, because she is such a good rebounder and she secures the ball. She makes the right decisions on the pass, you know. But, yeah, I get it that you want to score too and, and you want them to score. But I preach it to them so, so much that no matter what, without good defense, you're not going to win a game. And so for her, she buys into that aspect. And, and Ambria and Emma both does also, you know, because they don't score a lot of points, but they accept their role for what it is. And that's where, you know, it makes us successful as a team. But like you said, those three are invaluable to your team because of what they do inside that allows Kiara and Megan and Molly to do what they do outside. And uh, really unusual tonight that Molly didn't score at all. Yeah. Well, you know, Molly made some um, – but, again, you know, Molly did a good job crashing the boards, getting those you know, second, third opportunities. You know, she, she does a great job in transition, pushing the ball. You know, and a lot of her shots are just going in and out, you know. But you can't – it's just one of those things. And I, we had a talk after the game. I told her, I said, you know, those things will happen, you know. But, you know, she had a couple free throw shooting opportunities. And, you know, even there, those, those shots kept going in and coming right back out. So, you know, that's one of the easiest things in the game. You know, when you see that ball go through the net, you know, it feels that confidence. And sometimes, you know, you just got to step back and relax and let's, let's attack it a different way. Yeah, and, and sitting here where I do, you know, whenever I'm watching the shots go up, a lot of times you can tell whether they're on or off. And, and like you said, Molly's and Desiree both, they're just barely missing. And, uh, you know, a, a lot of it, you know, is and, and part of that right now is legs where – you know, against Coosa and Cedartown, Molly knocked down a few threes, and she's just unable to do that tonight. Yeah. Well, you know, that's why you know, I think like, uh, under Clark, it's just because we're sitting there talking. You know, you can tell, even in the first half, it took us a while to get our legs moving. But once we got dialed in and going, everything was fine. But absolutely, our legs are tired, you know, and if, if we got to grind it out again tomorrow. Yeah, you, you know. Got- uh, you get to go to Gordon Central tomorrow, one thirty start, so a little bit earlier than what the girls are used to uh, being on a Saturday. Uh, tell us what you're going to do or what you instructed the girls, what they need to do tonight to get ready for that early start tomorrow. Well, get hydrated and rest. You know, don't stay up late at night. You can't, you can't do it. Just go home and go to sleep because that's one of those things that got to do, and, you know, I always recommend them, you know, take a good tub bath, soak in the next all, you know, if they need to um, jump in a quick um, ice bath before we leave, we'll do that, you know, we got to do what we can to survive the food, but, you know, but right now the girls, are, they're grinding it out, I'm proud of them for that, and, you know, they, they want to make a statement, they want to win the region, uh, but we still got a lot of ball games ahead of them. Well, you moved to 4-1 and one in region play, uh, still, uh, the one loss, uh, to model, and you get Gordon Central tomorrow, so you distance yourself with Chattooga. Uh, Dade County is also tied for third, for, or tied for third with Chattooga, Gordon Central, and Dade coming into the night. So you get that chance tomorrow at Gordon Central. And uh, so tell us a little bit about what you know about them. Well, you know, their their team's led by Mercedes Coleman. Uh, she is a heck of a player. She averages 27, 28 points a game. You know, she's one of the uh, – she's almost like another Kiara. You know, she can totally dominate the game. She can play inside and out. Uh, so, for us, we just got to play team ball. We're not going to focus our attention on just one player because we're not going to let one player beat us by no means. But we're going to play a good team. We just want to try to limit her. We ain't going to just try to overplay her, shut her down, because we're not going to leave other people open. Well, and Chattooga did something a little bit different tonight than what the other teams have been doing. The other teams that come out in a 2-3 zone, they came out in man. Yeah. Well, they they had a little confidence of it, you know, making the mistakes to do that. You know, sometimes I guess that's something I'm less learned. I'm sure they're going to do something different themselves. But, you know, uh, everybody's going to have a different outlook. You know, for us, uh, we are who we are. We're going to rather we run a zone or we're going to press. We press a little bit tonight. You know, we're going to do whatever that, you know, the opportunity gives us so that we can try to get the points on the board. Yeah, well, and we know last night you jumped in that press last night against Cedartown and after being down 16, got the cut back and took the lead. You kind of did the same thing tonight. Is that you really never got behind Chattooga, but 
and you kind of let them hang in there, and then all of a sudden, boom, you start pressing, you get some steals, and you start moving the ball up and down the floor, and then you end up with a 25-point victory. That's right. Well, that's, that's, you know, anything can go on a hot run, you know, and that's what, that's what the game of basketball is about. It's, it's about streak, you know, and, and fortunately for us, it's, it's, it's about timing, you know, because you don't want to make an early streak go dead, and, and you know, so you never know when a team will get hot. Even Stuga, they started knocking down some deep three, contested three. So, you know, a team that can linger, linger around and knock down shots, they can make it a, into a game. So, you know, for our girls, I thought they did a, did a good job responding, coming back at them. You know, because that's what you got to do. You got you got to learn how to finish. Well, coach, you definitely finished tonight. Uh, good luck tomorrow at Gordon Central, and you get past that game tomorrow. Things calm down for you just a little bit. Yes, we, we definitely need that. We need some press time. So. so, and I'm quite sure that uh, you got Sunday and Monday, and then Tuesday you're right back here. Uh, with a game Tuesday, I, I don't remember who right off the top of my head. I got to get through this week first. But, uh, but, so, uh, but we do know we'll be right back here on the air Tuesday night, six o'clock. And I guess the, the easiest thing is to uh, just pull up my calendar as uh, Day County comes in. So you've got the the three teams back to back to back that are tied for third place. So you've already defeated Stuga. Uh You're going to take care of. Gordon Central tomorrow, we're going to come in Tuesday, take care of Dade County, be in second place all by ourselves, and put the, all the others behind us. That, that would be nice. <laughs> all right, well, Coach, thanks for joining us. Uh, we're going to take 30 seconds and be right back for the third quarter of the boys' game as they're tied at 25. Hey, folks, RW Laundromat, located on Elm Street here in Rockmart, the cleanest laundromat in northwest Georgia, offers state-of-the-art washers and dryers, TV, and free Wi-Fi while you wait seven days a week, or take advantage of our wash and fold service. We offer extra-large washers for the big loads. Churches, businesses, and ball teams are always welcome. That's RW Laundromat here in beautiful Rockmart, Georgia, and go Jack. Now, back to the action of Rockmart High School basketball here on WZOT. All right, we're back at Rockmart High School, and I want to thank Coach Tim Puckett and Coach Vic Calhoun, always taking time out of their busy schedule to join us at halftime of each game. And uh, uh, we get to talk to Coach Calhoun during the girls' game, talk about the previous game and the upcoming game, and then we get to get uh, Coach Puckett talking about his big win here tonight as the Lady Jackets come away with a 69-44 win uh, against the Tuga Lady Indians. So, Rockmore gets the ball to open up the third quarter. They get it over. The view throws it off the hands of rolling out of bounds. So, a turnover by the Jackets, opening up this third quarter. And Mosteller with a three. No good. Price goes over the back of rolling, and then he puts it up, and Poozer gets the foul. How in the wow. world is there not a foul? Wow. Price jumped over Tyler Rowland. Wow. And Coach Calhoun not happy with that call. Please just case, but the ref just turns around. <laughs> Price is at the line shooting, too, as Boozer blocked his shot, got called for a foul. That's going to be Duke's third personal. I, I, I have no idea how Tyler Rowland's got position inside. Devin Price jumps over up over the top of him. Gets the rebound, and he knocks down both free throws. So the first two points of the game are of this quarter. 7.30 to go now. Scored by Chatuga. Rowland gets it down in the corner to the few. He gets it knocked away by Jackson, and then it goes off of Sam's foot out of bounds. So Chatuga has very busy hands. Yes, that's two lost balls for us on two offensive possessions. We've got to protect the ball. Jackson in the game. He's... Rob Mars in a man. He drives to the goal. This is Boozer and Price go up. Roland picks it up. The few takes it right down the lane. And that shot gets blocked by Miles Mosteller. And then off the hands of the few out of bounds. So uh, the few got off a shot, but it got blocked. So three straight possessions, and we haven't done anything with it. But luckily, Chatuga's only scored two. But it cost Boozer a free a, uh, foul. So. Mostella tried to throw it inside. It was blocked by Burge. And Flowers picks it up, gets it to Mostella. He's guarded by Logan Burge. He takes it to the goal. And Burge bodies him up. 
and blocks the shot out of bounds. 6.37 to go third quarter. Chandler Cooper, Sam DePue, Juke Boozer, Tyler Rowe, and Logan Burge on the floor for the Jackets. Jackson throws it in, tries to hit Johnson cutting down the middle, and then they say Cooper knocks it out of bounds as it went off the hand of Price. So Johnson, Price, Flowers, Mosteller, and Jackson, as Jackson cuts down the hole. Down the, oh, my God, he was out of bounds. Standing out of bounds. Chandler Cooper gets a steal at half court, takes it to the goal, and lays it in. Line 27. Jackson was standing out of bounds as the few blocked his shot. They get it over to Price. Johnson cuts through the basket, and he finger rolls it in right past Juke Boozer. Boozer with the ball. Over the top to Roland. He tries to drive baseline. Back to Boozer. Over to Cooper. Three ball on the way, and it's good. It travels around and goes down, and Rockmore has the lead, 30-29. to 5.45 to play third quarter. Mosteller spin move on Burge. And Burt uh, blocks the shot and gets called for a foul. Don't know that I really agree with that one either. It looked pretty clean. Well, but I'm not still on half court. No, <laughs> we're at half court. He's on the baseline. But uh, it's hard to to say that's a foul when the exact same play just happened as Burge bodied up uh, uh, Mosteller, and they just called it out of bounds. Yeah. So... But he misses the free throw. Flat Mosteller's at the line shooting the free throw. He misses the first one. Second shot is up and no good. Rebound by Cooper. He gives it up to Roland. 5.35 to go, 30-29. to 29. Roland with the ball. Drives in, and Cooper moves on him, and it went off Cooper's hand out of bounds. Too many turnovers here early in the first two and a half minutes. That's, that's four or five, yeah, this quarter. Jackson with the ball. Rob Marsh playing man as Chatuga spreads the floor. As Chatuga spreads the floor, kind of like that uh, Kentucky uh, offense, as they spread the floor and they just dribble drive and shoot and uh, move it back for a three. Jackson took a three. Price got the offensive rebound, shot twice, missed both of them, and we come away with a rebound. Boozer has the ball, top of the key, wide open three. No good off the front iron. Rebounded by Flowers quickly up the floor as he takes it right at Boozer and lays it in as Boozer does three fouls just that able to do a whole lot. Yeah. And another throw one. And Coach Calhoun's going to call a timeout. So, 30-second timeout. Uh, we're going to take it with him. Rob Marsh trailing 31-30. Chicken Scratch Cakes and Cupcakes at 103 South Marble Street in Rock Mart is the place to go for made-from-scratch bakery items. They specialize in cakes with cakes include homemade cream cheese, lemon butter cream icing, as well as many more flavors. Try their specialty cupcakes, Chicken Scratch Cakes and Cupcakes, 103 South Marble Street in Rock Mart. Now, more of Rock Mart High School basketball here on WZOT. Back at Rock Mart High School. Jeff Sharp, Adam Blaylock, Eric Brownlow here, Robert Thorline at home laying on the couch, sick, supposedly. <laughs> he says he's sick, anyways. And. So what happened here? I have no idea. Hey. 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 What happened? All right, technical foul on the coach for Rotmark. So uh, that's the fourth technical this game. Was it? I don't think it was Calhoun, though, was it? I don't think it was. I think it was uh, Coach I, I think uh uh, one of the assistant coaches. So he only makes one free throw. Johnson all by himself inside as Mosteller hit him and he lays it in. 34 to 30. Chattooga now leads. 4.20 to go in the third quarter. The few over to Cooper. 
Three ball on the way. In and out. No good. Rebound by Price. And we've got an offensive foul on Malachi Jackson. That's going to be his fourth personal as he led with that forearm. Yep. And Jackson's going to come out of the game, and Woody's going to come in. And Javen Watley in the game. This is about the time uh, our tempo changes, if it hasn't been fast enough. I guess. So Watley comes in, and Roland goes out. Boozer has the ball. Back to Watley. Over to Boozer. Marcel is on him. The few has the ball. Back to Watley. Three ball on the way. And then oh. he fakes it in. And the three by Javen Wally is 34-33. And very quickly, Devin Price beats everybody down the floor. Flowers hits him under the goal, and it's 36-33. So we're not getting back on defense. And whoever that was, Glenn Walker's probably coming in for him. Wally with a uh, drives baseline, gives it up to Cooper. He gets it to Boozer. Wide open three, top of the key, and he knocks it out. And we're tied at 36. 3.20 to go, and we're right back where we started this quarter. 36-36. Both of these teams are tied. Woody with the ball, right side. Uh, Price. Price fakes out. Cooper cuts to the goal, misses the layup. Gets his own rebound. Falling out of bounds. Boozer takes it right to the goal as he's distracted by Flowers. And then he gets a steal by Woody and dumps it home, and the Jackets have a two-point lead. So Boozer and Johnson talking to each other, coming down the floor. Flowers, the view's on him. He goes wildly down the lane. Rebound by Boozer. Over to Cooper. Three, oh, I thought Burge was going to shoot a three. Cooper does. Air ball. Rebound by Johnson. And Cooper gets back to Fuse, mestering him in the backcourt. And Johnson gets it to Mosteller. It's 38-36. Rob Martin leads. 2.20 to go third quarter. And the pace is picking, the, picking up now. No question. I don't know which way to look. Mosteller goes down the lane and Burge gets a hand in, knocks the ball away, and gets called for a foul. So Logan Burge gets the foul. And Mosteller's going to go to the line shooting two. Uh, Eric, while we got a little break, you can give us a foul update. That's three on us, and I'm just going to double check. Yeah, they all have one on Cougar. So, Mostella misses the free throw. Glenn Walker comes in. Chandler Cooper goes out. So, Watley, Burge, DePew, Boozer, and Walker on the floor for the Jackets. Fast pace this game is. They have one foul. I don't see how that is. And he misses the second free throw. The few with a rebound. So Price, Mosteller, Woody, Johnson, and Flowers on the floor for the Indians. Boozer with the ball, top of the key. Gets it over to Wadley. He fakes back to Boozer, then he dribbles in. Three ball on the way by the few. In and out, no good. Rebound by Dylan Woody. He gives it up to Mostella quickly up the floor as Walker tries to intercept that intercept that pass to Price and knocks it out of bounds. Probably why he's in there. A little quicker. Yeah, and he brings a, a you know a lot of defensive pressure. Doing a much better job right now getting back on defense. Just gotta so, tighten it up just a little. Woody wide open three, barely catches rim, what rebound by Watley. He brings the ball up the floor, gives it up to Boozer. Inside to Burge, back to Boozer. Chatuga's in a 2-3 zone, over to Walker. He dribbles back near half court. Him and Boozer just play and catch. Boozer over to Walker, back to Wadley. Three ball on the way. And the few with a rebound. Great pass inside to Boozer, and Boozer missed the shot. And then Marcellor knocks it out of bounds. What a pass by the few on the rebound. In the air. Pass right back to Boozer. I don't know if he was expecting it or not. So Boozer gets it to the few. He drives in. Gets it to Wadley. Back to Burge. Johnson almost with a steal and almost not Burge down. Walker drives baseline over to Boozer. He drives down. Gives it up to the few. 
on the right side. He dribbles, gets it to Wadley, back to first. Three ball on the way, and it rattles around, rolls around, and goes in. And Rockwell now with a five-point lead, their biggest lead of the game, with 40 seconds to go in the third quarter. Osteller has the ball. A pressure Flowers has the ball. Out there half court. 35 seconds. We're going to see if Chattuga holds it for one shot. The few's on him. Woody has it. Wadley's got him. He gives it up to Price. Walters gets Price. Back over to Mosteller. Down to 20 seconds. Mosteller with Logan Burge on him. He dribbles in inside the three-point line. Picks up his dribble. Back to uh, Johnson near half court. Johnson looking to try and take it on Boozer. He can't. A few helps. Then they get it to Flowers. We're at 4 3. Flowers puts up a desperation shot off the front iron. No good. Wadley with a heave. Oh! And from three wow. quarter court, Javen Wadley almost knocks down a three ball Ooh. as it hits the back iron. 41 36. Rockhart leads as they started to cross way too soon on it. We're going to take 30 seconds and we'll be right back. Freeman Harris Funeral Home, the funeral home that has been providing a strong arm for our friends and neighbors to lean on for the past 76 years. We are proud of the young folks of our community and wish for them success on the field and off. Freeman Harris Funeral Home, Rock Mart's very own. Now more of Rock Mart High School basketball here on WZOT. All right, back at Rockmart High School as we're starting the fourth quarter. Jack is up 41-36. I didn't think it could get much better than the first half, but the intensity of this half is uh, doubled. Yeah, 25-25 at halftime. Uh, we scored 16, they scored 11, so uh, easily the the highest scoring quarter, uh, I believe. Uh, I think it was, what, 18-14 at the end of the first? That's right. And then 25-25, so first quarter was the highest scoring, but the third quarter very exciting because we took the lead. That's right. <laughs> so Chatuga gets the ball to open up the fourth quarter. Jackson back in the game. He's got four personals. Eric, real quick, do we have anybody in foul trouble? Uh, Boozer has three, and Walker has three. So, Malachi Jackson shoots the three, misses Johnson with a rebound. Wadley steals it, takes it all the way to the hole. Price stood his, stood his ground. Wadley ran him over, no call. They get it right back down. Here. Jackson gets his shot rejected by Boozer. Now Walker works frantically up and down, and Clayton Johnson's going to get called for a blocking foul. And for all that, he gets that foul. Yeah. After it. Well, I think he was out of breath. He had to take. He had to I have an oxygen break. Duke was definitely out of breath walking back down the court after that one. So, Rob Mark lost seven. 35 seconds in, and it turned into a track meet. Boozer with the ball. Chatuga's in a man. He takes Jackson with those four fouls. Should have took him to the goal, see if we can get him out of the game. Walker with the ball. <laughs> so... Bryce is talking to him, telling him he's got to go one way. Glenn Walker was at Chattooga last year, so they know him very well. Burge, wide open three, and it's good. 44-36, eight-point lead. Now Flowers brings the ball up. So Flowers down the lane, gets it to Jackson, three ball on the way, it's good. And Chattooga calls a timeout. 30-second timeout. It's 44-39, 6.41 to go in the game. 30-second timeout. We'll be right back. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm a left-hand turn single. Tink, tink, tink. The guy in front of you has had me on for the last 14 miles. And since you're stuck in traffic, you can just sit back and... Wait, you're going to try to pass on the left? Didn't you see my signal? And if you've got cut rate insurance, things could really take a turn for the worse. So get Allstate. To find out more about Allstate home and auto discounts, visit your local Allstate agent, John Purser, at 770-684-1328. Are you in good hands? Now back to the action of Rockmart High School basketball here on WZOT. Back at Rockmart High School as Malachi Jackson just knocked down the three to cut the lead to five. Rawar with the ball. Boozer inbounds to Burge. Back to Boozer. He's going to walk it up the floor. 
So they call play two. We'll see what happens. Wadley with the ball. Walmart five-point lead as he goes around the screen. Glenn Walker fakes the three, backs it out. Now Price is on him. Walker's taking him left hand. Back over to Wadley. A little bit of a mismatch there as Wadley definitely has a speed advantage. As he loses the ball, Price picks it up. And then Glenn Walker's going to get called for a foul, and that's going to be his fourth personal. So, Eric, real quick, team foul. Four on us, two on them. So, uh, with all the action we've had, only six fouls this half. Costello brings it across half court. Burge is on him. Fancy dribbling between the legs. Dishes off, and Boozer with a steal. Costello hits the floor. Wadley takes it right in. Gives it up to Burge. The view goes baseline. Back to Wadley. Three ball on the way. And it's good. Nothing but nylon. 47-39, Jackets up by eight. 5.35 to go. Jackson flows right by Watley, takes it to the goal and lays it in. As he, got, he caught Javen back on his heels. Yeah, and that doesn't happen too often. Boozer with the ball. Walker sets the screen, rolls out of it. Backs it out. Price knows he's left-handed. He's overplaying him to the left side. He gives it up to Burge. Johnson's on him. Wadley tries to set a screen. Johnson goes around it. Back to Wadley on the right side. Over to Boozer. Five minutes to go. The fuse sets the screen. Burge just right down. This is the layup. Great pass by Boozer. Wadley almost gets a steal. And he's coming up behind Jackson. And now he's guarding his fans. They leave Marcella wide open underneath, but Boozer, with the backside help, they give it out to Price, then to Jackson. Now Flowers has the ball. Top of the key, left side to Marcella. He dribbles back. Rawmar with a six-point lead, and they try a bounce pass inside to Price, and Boozer kicks it. Chandler Cooper's going to come in, and Walker's going to come out. So Walker's going to come out with those four fouls, and uh, he, he's going to get about two, two and a half minutes, and then he's going to come back in with that energy he has. Flowers, they get it inside to Mostella. He spins on Burge and puts it up and in off the glass. Slight mismatch there. Not much, but enough. Loser with the ball, brings it across half court. Mostella is on him. He gets it up to the few. Back to Boozer in the corner. Skip past Watley. Fakes the three. Drives in on Jackson. And Boozer with the ball. And he scores 49-43. Almost jammed it home, but he just laid it in. Marcella drives by Burge on Boozer. Hits the bottom of the rim. Watley picks up the ball. And then that's going to be a foul on number four, Marcella. That's his third personal and the third team foul. And now Glenn Walker's going to come back in. Burge is going out. So, Chattuga's going to pick up. Johnson's holding hold Boozer. You can't hug him there, bud. And that's going to be a foul on Clayton Johnson. That's the fourth team foul, his third personal. I think they're trying to get in the bonus. They are. To shoot free throws. So, they throw it into Walker. As... Tatuga has picked up man-to-man full court. Price sets up in the lane. Walker goes around and misses the shot. And Chandler Cooper gets the loose ball and they call for a traveling violation. He can't really uh, come down and, and dribble with a guy underneath him. <laughs> so 49-43, 3.31 to go in the game. Jack is with a six-point lead. Jackson with the ball. He's got four fouls. He pulls up, and he can knock that shot down. He misses the three as Watley was way off of him. The few with the rebound. Boozer brings it across half court. Gets it to, to Watley in the left corner. Back to Boozer. The few sets the screen. Boozer goes around it. The lob to Walker off the bottom of the backboard. Picked up by Cooper. Three ball by Watley. High arcing shot. And that's going to be a foul on Chandler Cooper as he pushed somebody in the back going for the rebound. There's a fine line right now with a little bit of a lead. Maintain the intensity, but 
I'm going to slow it down a little bit and maintain the ball, too. So Dylan Woody comes in. Mosteller is going out. So I thought we had a sub coming in, but we didn't. I think Coach Calhoun thought that was on Glenn and it was going to be his fifth. So Tyler Rowland goes to sit back now. So Jackson holds up the fist. That's the play they want to run. And they have spread the floor. We're in a man-to-man defense. Johnson with the ball. Dribbles left hand down the lane. Misses the shot. Walker with a rebound. And that could have easily been a foul on Johnson. His elbow was in his ear. So So Cruiser with the ball. Walker takes it. Right hand dribble. Back to Wadley. Fakes the three. Goes right around Jackson. Woody gets up under him. There's no way you can... Wow. The fan, there's a guy, an official on the baseline. They call a, the official, the furthest away from the call, calls a charging foul on David Watley. Wow. That, is, that uh, just blows my mind. Everybody has a zone, and that's, that is not his zone. Definitely not. So 49 43, 210 to play. Price cuts down the lane, and the finger rolls right over Boozer. Satuga gets. Chatuga gets a timeout, and Price and Walker, uh, five as high five as Price is running his mouth at Walker as he scored over the top of him. Chatuga takes a 60 second timeout, and we'll take it with him. Hungry? Get the food you want from the restaurant you love delivered at taxi speed. Try Tell Me Taxi Food Delivery. We deliver from all the restaurants in Polk County to all of Polk County, as well as Taylorsville, Braswell, Yorkville and parts of Temple. A delivery charge is only $5 in the city limits of Rock Mart and Aragon if ordering from these areas. You must have a minimum order of $10 required. Tummy Taxi Food Delivery is open 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Tuesdays and Wednesdays, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. You can call or text at 678-734-0382. 678-734-0382. Visit them on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash Tummy Taxi. 678-734-0382. Now more of Rock Mart High School Basketball here on WZOT. All right, back here at Rock Mart High School. Jeff Sharp, Adam Blaylock, and Eric Brownlow has 49-45, 2.09 to play, and Chicago is in a... What? What is it? A technical? Another technical? How is that a technical? Chandler Cooper was wide open under our goal. Boozer throws it all the way down. They're calling it. 35? Hey, what is that? On who? Oh, All right, so it's a technical foul on Dylan Woody of Chattooga. There were six people on the floor for Chattooga. He goes running off, so he's the one that gets the technical. The few shooting two technicals, and we'll get the ball at half court. He made one of two, so it's 50 to 45. So uh, Sam, not himself shooting free throws today. Uh, a little bit off. It, not himself kind of all around, but still playing a good game. All right, 2.09 to go. We lead by five, and we have the ball. Uh, so Chandler Cooper had a wide open layup as they get the ball. Boozer gets it to Roland. Back to Boozer. Over to the pew on the right side. Roland, top of the key. And Chatuga looks like they are in a 1 3 1. Skip pass all the way to the view from Boozer, and he's going to get. There's going to be a foul on Trey Flowers for blocking. And that's his second personal. And Eric, how many team fouls on the two six, six, and how many on us? I see they're in the. But we're in the ball, or they are in the bonus. I have six on us, but all right. So both teams are now in the bonus. Yeah. Cooper step back three, and he knocks it down. 53-45, and Chandler does a little bit of talking to the surprise himself. So Flowers with the ball, 
Rockmart with a eight point lead, sealed by Boozer, and he's going to slow it down. 120 to go. Chandler Cooper with a three. Wow, and that's a foul on Price. As he blocks Cooper's shot, and then Devin Price gets the foul. And Chandler Cooper's going to go to the line shooting three. Tyler Rowland likes it. Get a little grin there. That's just frustration, is all that is. Well, he came out to block the shot, and his momentum carried him right into Chandler. So Chandler Cooper's going to shoot three. Glenn Walker's at the table. He's going to come in. Boozer, Burge, Roland, Cooper, and DePue. Chandler Cooper makes the first Clay Burge boutique free throw as he's going to get two more. It's 54-45, 1.16 to play. Next shot is up and no good. So Walker comes in. Rolling goes out. Now, one more shot. Clay Birch Boutique. Go to theclayburch.com. It's in the Triangle Shopping Center. They've got Southern Fried Cotton Teas, hats for men and women. As a second shot, front iron, pack four goes in, and we've got a 10 point lead with 110 to go. Mosteller quickly up the floor. As Jackson, with those four fouls still in the game, takes it on third. Boozer's in. Boozer knocks that ball up against the soccer ball, and now Coach Calhoun's going to get a timeout, and it's going to be a 60-second timeout as Boozer rejects that shot, flexes a little bit, and it'll be to Boozer's ball. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Make sure you stop by Rock Mart Rent to Own, 966 here on the highway in Rock Mart. If you are looking for furniture, mattresses, and recliners for every budget, Come by and see owner Derek Tilly. Rockmart Rent to Own is your U Haul truck rentals dealer. They also fill propane tanks with the cheapest rates in Polk County. They're open Monday through Saturday or call them at 770 684 5314. That's Rockmart Rent to Own right across from Morningstar Baptist Church in Rockmart. Lewis Motor Company is the oldest car dealership in Rockmart. They have been serving Rockmart and the Polk County area for 56 years, providing quality used cars and great customer service before, during, and after the sale. Lewis Motor Company is proud to offer guaranteed credit approval while you wait. Give them a call today at 770-684-6694 or stop by and see our staff at Lewis Motor Company, 218 South Piedmont Avenue in Rockmart. Now, more of Rockmart High School basketball here on WZOT. All right, we're here at the Rock. Satuga trying to get it in. Great defense by the Jackets. As Clayton Thompson can't get it in. That's a five second violation. 104 to play, 55 45. Jackets lead. Walker inbounds it to the few. He dribbles backwards. They're going right into a corner. Gets it up to Boozer. Knocks out of bounds by Jackson. And that's a pretty good thing that they got knocked out of bounds. And we were close to a 10-second call. So Tyler Rowland's going to come in the game. Chandler Cooper's going to go out. So another ball handler on the floor for the jacket. So Boozer, Walker. Walker pushed off. Good yeah. thing they didn't see it. Johnson tried to come up behind him. He takes it right to the baseline. And then a, he throws it away as Johnson picks it up. Jackson with a three ball passes it to Mosteller as, Bert, as Tyler Rowland was going to block it. And then uh, I think Flowers took it right to the goal and laid it in, and they're within eight. Boozer right past everybody down the floor, and that's, got a, that's going to be an offensive foul on Boozer once again. Price moves in up under him as he took off. As a, as these officials well, don't understand when you leave your feet, you got no choice to go when the man moves up under you. That's a block, not a charge. They figure out they're going to call it every time, so it's going to keep doing it. So 55 47, 20 seconds to go. Jack is for steal by Walker. He's one on one with Johnson. Johnson hammers him. Boozer was going to jam it on the putback. So Clayton Johnson picks up the foul. Walker's going to go to the line shooting two. That's his fourth personal. 18 foul on Chatuga. 17 seconds to go. These two free throws brought to you by the Clay Birch Boutique. Go down to the Triangle Shopping Center and see Tracy Clay. Or go to the ClayBirch.com and see all of her inventory. Glenn Walker's free throw. Now hits the back iron, hits the back iron again, and goes down. 56-47. Boozer comes out. Chandler Cooper comes in. 
So maybe just something so that Boozer doesn't get a technical and he can play tomorrow. Good call. Walker, Walker's second free throw is in. And Watley is going to come in, and Glenn Walker's going to go out. And it's probably for about the same reason, even though Glenn doesn't have one. Ten-point lead, 15 seconds. Rob Hart in that man-to-man. Jackson with the ball. Gives it up to Flowers. He drives right down the lane. We let him go by. He misses the layup. Wally with the rebound. And he gets it up to Cooper. Fakes a shot. Goes in. Shoots. And time was expiring, and that's a foul. And the foul's going to be on Moss Teller. So Chandler Cooper's going to go to the line shooting two with one-tenth of a second on the clock. So this one's academic now, 57-47, as the Rock Martin defense, as a Chattooga came in scoring 67 points a game, we hold them to 20 points under their average, and we scored right on our average. So Chandler Cooper misses the first Clay Birch Boutique free throw and misses the second. But as Price gets the rebound, he throws the deep, and now... We can definitely say Rockmart is the team to beat in Region 7 as both of these teams come in undefeated and we come out with a 57-47 victory. We're going to take 60 seconds. Uh, Eric, is 60 seconds enough for you to add everything up? I'll do my best, sir. All right, we'll just take 60 seconds and be right back. WZOT Rockmart, W270CE Rome. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm a left-hand turn single. Tink, tink, tink. The guy in front of you has had me on for the last 14 miles. And since you're stuck in traffic, you can just sit back and... Wait, you're going to try to pass on the left? Didn't you see my signal? And if you've got cut rate insurance, things could really take a turn for the worse. So get Allstate. To find out more about Allstate home and auto discounts, visit your local Allstate agent, John Purser, at 770-684-1328. Are you in good hands? Hey, folks, this is your old buddy Bill Sherfsey here at All Star Motors. We're stacking them deep and selling them cheap. We have available financing for every credit need, including our new Buy Here, Pay Here program. You can check us out on the web at www.allstarmotorco.com or call 770-684-CARS. That's 770-684-2277. Or better yet, just come see the friendly folks at All Star Motors and go Jacket. You're listening to Rock Martin High School Basketball here on WZOT, 101.9 FM, AM 1220. Yeah, they'll be waiting on him. When he, he's got to come downstairs. All right, back at Rock Martin High School, Jeff Sharp, Adam Blaylock, and Eric Brownlow. As we got a little uh, excitement going on across the way, and looks like our friendly SRO, Kyle Shell, is going to take care of things. Uh, so, Eric... Uh, with the excitement, you get everything totaled up there. Yeah, I think so. All right, so 57-47, Rob Mart wins. And uh, for Chichuga, we uh, there as Malachi Jackson scored the first eight points of the game, and then at halftime, he didn't have any more. Yeah, well, he, he ends up to 14. And uh, he's the leading scorer for them. Then we got uh, Clayton Johnson with nine. And then Price, Mossfeller, and... Malachi Max all had eight apiece. So very uh, that their scoring is distributed of what's that five players? Yep. All right, and then for the jackets, as uh, I'm gonna take a wild guess and say Sam Defue is gonna lead us again. Yeah, he had 15. He he was 50 percent from free throw. And then Which is uh, very unusual. He came into the game shooting 88 percent. Exactly. And Boozer had 11. And Cooper came up big with 10 tonight. 10 big points. Yeah, and he knocked down several threes late in the game. And Burge was six, Watley was six, Walker was five, and playing with four fouls for a lot of time. So, once again, a lot of scoring uh, spread around pretty good. Yeah, and that's the one thing that the uh, that this boys team does is that their scoring is uh, very spread out. Uh, you know, between Sam Defue, Juice Boozer, uh, and Chandler Cooper got into action tonight. So, uh, but it, this team is playing extremely well. They go to five and zero in region play. They take over first place as Chattooga drops to five and one, and they even out their overall record at seven and seven. And Chattooga drops to eight and eight. But a big game tomorrow as they go on the road to Gordon Central. 
And uh, it's going to be – if they can get past that as, uh, you know, Gordon Central, nowhere near the team that Chattooga is, but we've got to go on the road. And this is the first time uh, since uh, – well, they went on the road Friday and Saturday, but the first time this week they've been on the road. So we played three games here at, at the Rock. Yeah, that's four games in the week, and that's a lot to ask. Yeah, four yeah. games in five days and, and – Three and three nights in a row. Yes, exactly, uh, as a – Big win against Cedartown last night. A huge win tonight against Chattooga. And then they've just got to go and take care of business at Gordon Central tomorrow. And then they're going to have Sunday and Monday where they can kind of rest and get ready for Dade County to come in on Tuesday. Yeah, I hope the uh, emotions of the last couple of nights haven't overwhelmed them and uh, they can they can be ready uh, for the game tomorrow. But tonight I think the story was defense. You said we held them 20 less points than their average and uh, great defensive effort. And uh, a lot of uh, lot of players showing up that haven't necessarily been a factor, like Chandler Cooper with his 10 points and uh, came through big tonight. So we spread the wealth around, ended up working out for us. That's it. So the, the a clean sweep for the Lady Jackets and the Jackets tonight as the girls come away with a 69-44 win and the boys come away with a 57-47 win as, you know, it's always good. <laughs> that's, well, that's, well, that's, I saw there. Well, that, that's, uh, <laughs> that's Coach Mark Winters. That's Drew Lindsay's assistant. He, uh, he wrestled in college. So he had a basketball out there on the wrestling mat. I don't know what he was doing. Okay, the wrestlers so, are a different breed. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. <laughs> so, uh, but the girls come away with a 69-44 win, and the highlight of the night is Kiara Berry scores over a thousand points, and as a sophomore, halfway through her sophomore year, and quite an accomplishment for that young lady. And we'll have to get with Coach Bucket to find out. Uh, I would say Caroline Williams probably has the scoring leader in the school, uh, and we'll have to find out what the total point is for her. Uh, but uh, she gets her 1,000th point tonight in that, that win, and they go to Gordon Central tomorrow. The girls play at 1.30. The boys play at 3 o'clock. And then WZOT will be on air next Tuesday, 6 o'clock, as Day County comes in. So the girls game at 6, the boys game at 7.30. And for the girls, if they can get a win tomorrow against Gordon Central, get a win against Dade County, and they got the win against Chattooga, all three of those were tied for third place, they'll only have one loss right behind model, and they distance themselves from those three. For the boys, they've just got to have status quo blow and uh, do what they've been doing and get that win against Gordon Central tomorrow and get the win against Dade County as now they are in first place and the game at Chattooga will be a, a very telling sign because the way the region tournament works out is if you win, if the boys, whoever the regular season winner is, they get to host the region tournament. Right. So if we can keep first place, then we get to host the region tournament, and we know how what kind of advantage that can bring, not just the boys, but the girls as well. I think more importantly, we want to keep it away from Chattooga. Exactly. That's, uh, uh, that's where, it, well, it was at model last year because it went to the girls. It was at Chattooga the year before. So we're hoping we can bring it here to the Rock in the month of February uh, and have that game right here. The ball is definitely in our court, as they say. We're in control of our own destiny. And so uh, it's just maintaining that uh, that level that we've been playing at. All right, well, Coach Lindsey wants to push in these bleachers, so we're going to... Uh, apparently we're in the way. Yeah, apparently, <laughs> yeah, apparently we've got to wrap things up, which we're about to wrap it up anyways, but the girls come away with a 69-44 win. The boys come away with a 57-47 victory, and both of them are in the... Rob Mart's at the top in the boys in the region standings. Rob Mart's in second place in the region standings, and uh, so a very good night here at the Rock. So... For Jeff Sharp, Adam Blaylock, Eric Brownlow, our time is up. We thank you for yours.